So what's going on guys, it's Captain America, hope you guys are well and thank you so much for coming onto this channel. So, as always starting off with the match stats, so for this game we did win 3-0, it was a friendly request from Emigras where we have played them previously and we have defeated them many times and it was a case where they had a full 11, all apart from the goalkeeper AI and we wanted to compete against them. And again it's just a preparation for us as we look into going into the pro league side of things for next year and just the general preparation with the team that we have. So. You know, on our side we had six shots in total, which again was a strong performing attacking play, compared to like the two shots from the opposition. We did have most of the possession at 53%. You know, the style that we were playing for this game was high line with the defence that you'll see. You know, the passing was very simple, and this is the play that we like to have within the team. You know, triangular passing, just keeping it quick and on, on, on the floor, as, as you could see in this game. You know, within the first minute we did concede a penalty, but they did miss. And then we did go on and score within the uh, the fifth minute in this game. And then we scored two more. Leo, in fact, scored all the goals. So, you know, a hat-trick performance from Leo. Well done to him. But again, from our side of things, very good football. Do enjoy this game. You know, it was a penalty miss, as mentioned, the first goal. But then Leo did score a great goal afterwards. You know, X again coming up with the assist. Um, and again for the second goal as well, very similar with Yejo passing over to Lior again and then Lior scoring again the final goal for us. You know, overall a great, great performance from the boys as we do press on to the to the latter end now of FIFA 22. But we have got like a very good depth of uh, individual players for each position, which, you know, brings up that competition within the team. And it's something that we've always wanted to do. And now for each and every game that we do play, we've got nearly a full 11, which is always fantastic to be part of. So, you know, that competition within the team keeps everyone on the toes. And a great performance again from the boys, a clean sheet from the defensive side of things. Like, we, we played very structured within this match. I think the, the games before this Emigras friendly, we were losing two free, two free games we lost. Um, again, it was just the case where we got quite a lot of trialists within the team. You know, Chaban is my centre-back partner, uh, he has been playing with us for quite a bit now, but again, brand new to the team. But just to give you a quick update within the lineup from our side of things, so we did not have a goalkeeper. Um, oh no, sorry, we did have a goalkeeper. We had Mukiele playing as a right-back, myself and Chaban as a centre-back, Kanatoris as a left-back. We had Begovic as a CDM, and same with Thiago and Yezhul as a uh, centre midfield. We had uh, T. Perrin as a cam, and then X and Leo, our strongest, lesser striking pair that we have, um, being as the strikers for this game. So again, boys, do feel free to enjoy and like and subscribe if you do enjoy what you see within the team style and the way that we play. You know, we are a Division 1 club, looking at progressing, as mentioned, to the Pro League scene. You know, hopefully, fingers crossed with the, the cross-play oh, side of things, we could go and register for the VPG side of things. But unfortunately for us, we'll have to just keep on the PC element for now and stick with the Pro League uh, in Germany. But again, it's something that we've always wanted to do and the team that we have now with the depth and the competition within the side is just going to be great for us. And as we look at progressing and competing against the top teams for next season in FIFA 23. But just moving on, <clears throat> moving on really in terms of like today's topic and what I wanted to, uh, to discuss, you know, we did have the Liverpool versus Man City game yesterday. You know, this is a prediction that I placed on my video yesterday on the lineup as well as the scores, just, the, just some match highlights as well. So the scoreline that I predicted was 2-1 to City, you know, 2-1 City winning the game um, in extra time. That's what I predicted, but both teams to score was guaranteed. You know, the head-to-heads for the previous games that they've had just in general over the last uh, five games, let's say, was like a 3-2 win to Liverpool. You had a 2-2 draw and then another 2-2 draw and then Liverpool did lose at Anfield um, in 2021 to Man City, 4-1. So that was the season that Liverpool had many, many injuries, man. Like Van Dijk was injured. We had like other key players completely injured. So it was expected that, you know, City would win that game. But, you know, we've come now to a new season uh, where we've got Nunes as a striker for Liverpool. Again, he did he did come on as a second uh, half substitute around the 60th minute. He had Haaland starting for Man City, which I predicted was going to be the lineup. The only lineup change that was incorrect was for Liverpool, just the Matip. I thought it was going to be Konate that would be playing. And again, just a great performance from Liverpool. You know, overall, the way that they played, the pressing style, you know, the high intensity straight away put Man City on the back foot. You know, Trent, um, I've been mentioning in my previous videos, Trent's positioning whenever he attacks has changed. You know how he used to go as a wing back and stay on the wing? You know, now he operates more as a midfielder, as we saw with his first goal. Yes, 
he did score and it was slightly deflected by Aki. But the way that his positioning is, is something that Ten Hag is trying to do with the new signing at left back for Manchester United. This guy is just trying to copy Liverpool, man, with all his tactics. And it's something that's working for Liverpool and this man thinks it's going to work for, you know, United. But United got dealt with first team versus first team in a way for, you know, Atletico Madrid and they lost 1-0. They're not going to do great, Man, Man United, and this is something I've raised over my past videos. Like, they've been overhyping that they've won the preseason trophy for being the best consistent side during preseason, which is great. But at the end of the day, the season's now going to be starting next week. You've got all of these competitions, they've got a lot of their first team players that were playing a lot of the numbers for these preseasons. They're not going to play to the standard that. Ten Hag is going to be hoping for in terms of consistency. It's going to be, you know, a shock when they do get 7th or 8th within the league. It's not going to be a surprise for the other teams, just around the competition and the purchases, as well as the acquisitions that the other teams have made. You know, Manchester United, they haven't sorted out their defence. They've still got Maguire. You know, he did make a lot of fumbles in pre-season, but... I don't know, Man United are Man United, you know, even when Liverpool won this Community Shield, they're like, oh, you know, why, it's just a, it was a Mickey Mouse trophy, but the Community Shield is the trophy that they've won 17 times, they're the most successful Community Shield club in the UK, so, yeah, they're just yapping away, man, because these guys haven't won a trophy in years. Since Sir Alex Ferguson has, has left, Man City has been the most dominant Manchester club um, in the city. You know, Manchester's blue for the last couple of seasons, for like the last 10 years, you know, Manchester United are nowhere near Manchester City. So, you know, they're, they're a bit hurt, you know, unfortunately, they are a bit hurt, but, you know, with, with, let's just get away from Manchester United. We don't really like to talk to them. They're not in the same level of standard as Liverpool and Man City. But the funny thing is, you know, at the end of this game, it's going to be a case where, you know, Pep's going to be running to his shake and be like, look, I need 500 million more, you know, to spend on acquisitions for players. But when you look at the lineup that Manchester City played, it wasn't a, a bad lineup. You know, you've got the likes of Walker on the right. You've got um, Diaz as well as Akia centre backs. Again, a strong uh, centre back partnership. You've got left back Kinsella, who for me is one of the best, let's say, left back as well as right back flexibility and versatile, versatility player um, on those sides. Like, absolutely insane. His strength is, is on another level. His footwork, he could play with both right or left. His positioning, his, his attacking vision and awareness is just on another level, man. Cancelo is a really good purchase for them. Then, of course, you've got Edison in goal. You've got Rodri, that's a brick as a uh, central defensive midfielder. You've got Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne. So that three in the midfield is a very strong three. And if you verse or base that against, like, Liverpool's three, it, there's a lot of competition around that. Like, you've got Hendo, Thiago and Fabinho. Like, compared to De Bruyne, Rodri and Bernardo Silva, like, you would expect... You know, Manchester City do be controlling that midfield side of things. But Liverpool done very well. Thiago, beautiful maestro on the ball. You know, his uh, tackling and pressing ability, retrieving the ball. And then his passing vision is just on another level, man. And then, of course, the front three. I did go ahead and predict that we were going to be having Salah on the right. Firmino. And then, of course, Diaz. You know, they did do well. Of course, Salah, you know. Uh, setting up the first goal for Trent and then you got like the other likes of him scoring a penalty Firmino doing what he does in terms of his pressing job and then Nunes coming on around the 60th minute which was expected and for him to have a pivotal part in terms of the gameplay you know the handball decision as well as a goal his sorry third goal was just um, you know a great appearance for him to make and a morale booster you know especially the the, the memes that all these united uh, supporters have been doing over the past three season you know the pre-season champions let's say united are the memes that these guys were coming up with were just absolute banter man they were calling nunez the andy carroll but again it's pre-season it takes time to adapt for uh, you know specific players it's not like van der beek who has to take two seasons to adapt for him to actually mingle within the united side you know, we're not like that. You know, with Fabinho as well, very similar. He took a while from Monaco to Liverpool. A couple of games and he wasn't playing for us. And then, of course, he's now moulded in and he's one of the best central defensive midfielders in the world. And that is a fact against the likes of Rodri, Kante um, in that position as well. Casemiro is a bit aged. He's not in that, you know, equation no more. But, you know, these three are just fantastic, let's say, central defensive midfielders. <clears throat> And again, you know, Liverpool as well, they did not have Alisson, they did not have Kelleher as well, so they had to go with Adrian, the third, 
you know, uh, let's say goalkeeper of choice. And uh, he did perform very well. You know, his performance in terms of his saves were good. You know, Mahrez did have a lot of chances on that right to cut in. And he did shoot, but he did miss quite a few chances. You know, the goal with um, the offside um, for, the, for the first goal, sorry, for City was a case where, again, it was a decision where they should have just continued. Trent, I don't know what he was doing. He just completely stopped. Like, he was looking at the linesman and he just completely stopped. But again, this is the new rule that they have where even if it's offside, just continue with the play. And if you score, you score. Then it's reviewed by VAR if it's going to be a goal or not. And this is sometimes where it can get a bit confusing. Even if, if, even if I was playing, it would be a case where if the offside flag is up by the linesman, then it's a case where it's offside. You, you slow down, tech, you know, just generally, and you, you assume that it's going to be offside. But then now with this whole VAR malarkey, it's going to be a case where you can't even switch off. Even if the referee or the linesman does call it offside, you can't slow down. You have to be at the same pace. You have to be in the same mentality to, 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 was it, to tackle the individual player or prevent them from scoring. So, you know, Trent should have been a bit more conscious with what he'd done. I think it was a mistake on his side because if he did move across to more of the position where he could have blocked the ball, it, it would have been a goal from Alvarez. But, again, a great start for Alvarez within the Man City side of things. His first, like, actual major goal within the club scene, uh, if, if we're not including less of the preseason. So, again, a morale bar, uh, a booster for him. But then you got Haaland, for example, where he played the entirety of the game. You know, he, he wasn't... He wasn't great. Uh, it was a case where, I don't know if it was the distribution side of things, he wasn't getting what he needed. But again, he had an open chance where he done a... It was, his positioning was really good. Like, it hit the... Uh, was it the goalkeeper? The goalkeeper saved it. He done a really cool, like, 360 turn. Positioning was amazing as a forward, but man just blared it over the crossbar. It hit the crossbar, then it blared off. But again, I don't see that detrimenting his performance. I think he will go on and just score many more goals. But, you know, new Nunes had the best or better, let's say, debut as such in this, let's say, derby of Man City versus Liverpool with the strikers and the acquisitions that they made. You know, Carvalho as well, really looking forward to him, you know, mingling within the Liverpool side. His dribbling and his feet, his just the whole vision and the way he moves is just going to be a beautiful sight to see. And that is a bargain by the uh, purchase from Liverpool. So, you know, overall, I'm glad that Liverpool did win. And it was a trophy, as mentioned in my previous videos, where... It was a trophy that Jurgen Klopp hadn't won as yet. So, you know, this is now a completion within his, let's say, Avengers Thanos rings and, you know, everything that he needs to in, in order to conquer uh, the Premier League. And comparing him to, let's say, the likes of Pep, you know, Pep hasn't won the Champions League with Man City. Yes, he's won every single other, let's say, major trophy as such, you know, the Premier League or whatever the case is, but... You know, Jürgen's done a fantastic job collectively with the team that he's brought up to the team that he has now. Man City, you know, with Pep, he's gone over to clubs such as like Bayern Munich, as well as Man City, where they had a great team already to start with. And he's got such unlimited pocket money with Man City, where it's going to be a case where I, I do feel that he's going to be purchasing or looking at purchasing Cucurella or, or Grimaldo that they're looking at as the left back position. I honestly feel that, yes, they may focus on Grealish being the left winger as such and cutting in those balls for Haaland, but I don't see him playing consistently Grealish this season. He, he wasn't that great over, overly against Liverpool. Um, you know, they may, they may make an acquisition on that left wing side, someone that can maybe cut in with their right foot. They don't have that type of player at the moment at Man City. It's just unfortunate that they did lose Sterling, let's say, for example, as well as Jesus. But it'll be interesting to see if Alvarez will be playing in that position on the left. Um, so it may be the case where you've got Mahrez on the right, you've got Haaland in the centre, and then you've got Alvarez on the left. You know, of course, switching with the likes of um, Grealish. But let's see what happens with Man City. It's a great performance from Liverpool side of things. I'm, I'm happy that they did win this trophy. And of course, it's a, great, it's a great morale boost there as well, because Liverpool never, ever do great within their pre-season. So for them to win this, as well as a, a morale boost for the season ahead, especially against Man City, where we beat them 3-1, again, not with our strongest, strongest goalkeeper in the goal as well, is a great little feat. But yeah, guys, we are coming to the end of the video. I do appreciate your guys' time as always. Please feel free to like and subscribe. You know, we are on 249 subscribers, so close to 250, which is the target. So please feel free to like and subscribe. But I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.